The relationship between Picard and the Elorian bartender Guinan has long been shrouded in mystery. From her debut in the Season 2 episode, The Child, on November 21st, 1988, to her starring role in Star Trek Generations, the history of their relationship has been one for the ages. At times, the two conversed as secret lovers, other times as best friends and even siblings. But with as mysterious as their relationship is, the origins of that relationship is far more mysterious. Guinan came aboard the Enterprise D in 2365 at Captain Picard's personal request. On a recent episode of The View, Sir Patrick Stewart publicly and officially asked Whoopi Goldberg to return to the role of Guinan for Season 2 of the CBS All Access series Star Trek Picard. Because of this, I felt it be only right that I dedicate an episode of Star Trek Explained, a new series I'm working on, to the origin of their relationship. In order to understand the history of their relationship, you have to understand that Guinan had met Picard for the first time after Picard himself had known her for years. Confused? Don't worry. All will be made clear in no time. The character of Guinan was based on Mary Louise Cecilia Guinan, who went by the name Texas, a Prohibition-era MC and owner of the 300 Club in New York City. In the episode The Child, Guinan tells Wesley that she met Picard for the first time when she came on board the Enterprise D. However, it's later revealed in the first episode of the sixth season, entitled Time's Arrow Part 2, that Picard actually met Guinan during an away team mission when they traveled back in time. You see, Guinan urged Picard to go along with the away team, as otherwise they will have never met in the past and could change history. I mention this because normally Riker prevents Picard from going on away missions. Anyway, it's in the Earth year of 1893 that Guinan meets Picard for the very first time alongside Samuel Clemens, the author known as Mark Twain. Because Picard had known Guinan for quite some time at this point, he was able to gain her trust rather easily, and she's incredibly instrumental in helping them on their mission and returning to the 24th century. In the book, the autobiography of Jean-Luc Picard, the story of one of Starfleet's most inspirational captains, Picard himself, edited by David A. Goodman, tells how he came to meet Guinan for the very first time. In Chapter 4, Picard travels to New Paris, an Earth colony, to inform his former commanding officer's ex-wife of his death. The following is an excerpt from that book, which begins on page 92. New Paris was one of Earth's oldest and largest colonies, dating back before the founding of the Federation. It had a population of over 3 million, and the planet had a wide variety of populated ecosystems. When we arrived, Mazara provided me with exact coordinates of the home where Lofton's ex-wife lived. Shouldn't we try to call first? I said. It seems strange to go in unannounced. Lofton's instructions were to do just that, Mazara said. She doesn't have a communicator, wants her privacy. Me showing up with no warning seemed to fly in the face of that desire, but I decided to follow orders. I went to the transporter room. Anthony Mazara was on duty. I gave him the coordinates. Kind of hard picturing fat Captain Lofton finding a wife, he said. Belay that, I said, and got on the transporter pad. There was no bottom to the depths the Mazara boys would dive. I beamed down to find myself in a lush thicket of trees and vines. I could hear a soft rain high above, but the canopy of leaves kept much of it from reaching me. It was a serene and beautiful environment. I took out my tricorder and detected a structure not far away. There were no life form readings, however. I moved through the thicket, and in a few moments found a house, one story high, set in amongst the forest, made of indigenous wood and stone. It had a natural camouflage, making it impossible to see until I was almost upon it, but my scanning for life forms was still unsuccessful. Hands in the air, a woman's voice said behind me. I did as she told me. The woman circled around me. She wore a long gown and a wide-brimmed hat and held a large, formidable-looking rifle aimed right at me. How did you find me? I know it wasn't that tricorder. I can fool those stupid things. Um, I'm from the Stargazer. Captain Humphrey Lofton figured that loser would come bothering me, she said. What does he want? I'm very sorry to inform you. Wait a minute, she said breaking out into an infectious smile. You're Jean-Luc Picard. Oh my, it's been such a long time, and I didn't recognize you with all that hair. This caught me off guard. I'd never seen this woman before, but she obviously knew me. She lowered her rifle, so I dropped my hands. I'm sorry, you have me at a disadvantage, I said. You know me? Her demeanor suddenly changed. She seemed slightly awkward with the situation, but also amused. Oh, no. Sorry. I thought you were someone else. 
Someone else named Jean-Luc Picard? Yes. Strange coincidence. He's a bald guy, a lot older, she said. I'm Guinan, nice to meet you. Sorry about the hands up thing. She shook my hand, her grin filled with Cheshire Cat irony. So you're in Humphrey's crew? Well, yes, in a way. On behalf of Starfleet and the Federation, I want to express my condolences on his death. Oh, that's very nice, but Humphrey was three husbands ago, she said. It's been 30 years since I've even seen him. 30 years? She already seemed quite a bit younger than the captain. But that was in human terms. The mysteries were multiplying. Now, I'm going to need you to get me out of here. They've known I was on the planet for some time, and they were probably keeping track of your ship because they knew Humphrey was one of my husbands. Wait. I don't have time to wait. If they detected your transporter beam, who are we talking about? We were interrupted by a blast from the pulse weapon, which knocked the bark off a tree right next to me. Them, she said, taking my hand and leading me off in a run. More blasts, each just missing us. We reached a large stone, and she had us hide behind it. I tried to get a look at our assailants. We had taken up a position about 20 meters away. Who's shooting at us? Some mercenary or bounty hunter, she said. And he's not shooting at me, he's shooting at you. He wants me alive. Every answer she gave led to more questions, but I had had enough. I took out my communicator. Picard de Stargazer. Two to beam up. There was no answer. He's probably jamming you, Guinan said. I'm worth a lot. She held up her rifle. If you make a run for that big tree over there, it'll draw him out, and I can get a clean shot. I looked to where she was indicating. It was a distance. Don't take too long to aim. Don't worry, she said. Her confidence was reassuring. Ritty, I said. She nodded. I took off. After about three steps, I heard a blast that didn't sound like our assailants. You can stop running, Guinan said. I turned and saw a prone figure on the ground. I went over to him. It was a species I didn't recognize in camouflage clothing, with a ridge bisecting his forehead. I took his weapon, found a device on his belt that was jamming communicator transmissions, and shut it off. I'll take him back to the ship and turn him over to New Paris authorities, I said. You're taking me too, she said. I can't stay here anymore. But... No buts. I had a perfectly good hiding place till you showed up. Where are you guys going? Well, our command base is Starbase 32. That sounds fine, she said. She smiled. Besides, aren't you interested in getting to know me? In truth, I was. So you see, the relationship between Picard and Guinan is a strange one. He knew her before she knew him, and she knew him before he knew her. In terms of their relationship, Guinan has stated that it's beyond friendship and beyond family, while Picard has stated their relationship was far beyond friendship, and that Guinan was very selective about whom she calls a friend. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Star Trek Explained, and if you'd like more, let me know in the comments below. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you can stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, go ahead and check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.